Weather Warriors, welcome. We got a potential big snowstorm setting up here in the northwestern United States and southern Canada. I'm going to talk about that. I'm also going to go over a couple of forecasting power ups and tips so that you can track storms along with me as well. And I'm also going to go over a couple of big announcements here on the channel as well. So stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome to the other side of this video. We're going to go over what the negative PNA pattern that's sitting up here means here in a second, what that means for snow. I'm also going to unveil what the weather models show for snowfall amounts. But first and foremost, if you like videos like this, daily forecasts, extreme weather, forecasting tutorials, subscribe below. We release these daily. Hit the bell notifications. And also, would you use a weather social media website? Comment below because I'm thinking about potentially creating one for our community if there's enough interest. So let me know your thoughts on that. So first and foremost, we're going to look at the pattern here. This is around the 28th or maybe the early part of October. We got a negative PNA pattern setting up. So what does that mean? Well, you typically get troughing out west and ridging out east. This is going to be short-lived, but it looks pretty abrupt and pretty strong here when it does happen. And what that means for the west coast is potentially a decent amount of cold air coming down, spilling down, and potentially some strong storm systems and some snow as well. So this is a very favorable snow pattern. If you live in the northern plains and in the northwestern United States, there's probably not going to be enough cold air for the northern plains. But nonetheless, it's definitely something to watch. And the East Coast, it's typically warm and drier, except if you live up uh, towards the ridge area where the heights are uh, a little bit uh, more dense. Now, now what we want to look at here is the height change. Okay, so you got lower heights over here and you got higher heights over here. So what the heck does that mean? Well, let's go over to our handy dandy marker board here. Now, when you get higher heights, we're looking at 500 millibars. So that's near and below the jet that's up in the atmosphere. This is the surface right here. This is 500 millibar. When they're condensed, when they're lower, when the 500 millibars go down, when they go lower, it typically means colder air, so the air is condensing. And then when it gets higher, it's expanding, so that means warmer air, so it's a warmer air mass. So essentially, we're just looking at air masses. And you can see, it just indicates a very warm air mass in late September and early October out east, and a very cold one out west. So these are the things we look at in the long range. We don't get too much into details, but this is a favorable pattern if you're wanting snow in the west, northwest corner of the United States. Uh, near Montana especially. So let's just look at this uh, potential storm system coming in now. This is around the 29th of September. This is the vorticity in the atmosphere. It's kind of measuring the atmosphere, the spin, the, the energy in the atmosphere. And you can see your storm system right here. There's positive vorticity advection here, right there. Near and out ahead of that, and to the northwest of that especially, you're going to get some very strong lift that occurs. And that's going to support a potentially powerful storm system here in Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, and southern parts of Canada. And so we're going to go over to the models and take a look at that real quickly here. This is the radar essentially in the future. So we're looking at the precipitation. And this is a new weather website that I found called weathernerds.org. So you can find some cool uh, maps here on weathernerds.org. They have some cool tropical maps as well. So we're just going to crank through this thing. And uh, we're going to get towards, uh, let's see, with the 29th or so. And when we go out there, you can see this storm system starting to come in here. Your low, these are your isobars. So your lower isobars are going to be lower pressure. So we got a low pressure system developing there and very cold air coming down behind it. So what's going to happen here? Well, as this thing develops, you can see snow that starts to occur. This is your low pressure system right here kind of elongated, but the, the center is kind of right here. Indicate This is kind of an elongated low, which could indicate a, a nice area of cold air in this area. But what we're looking at here is snow right here in this blue area. See that rain to snow line? That's where your rain to snow line is, and this is late September. So you're potentially talking about some snow in Montana and parts of North Dakota here. In late September, and this GFS model has been pretty accurate, or not accurate, pretty consistent. We're going to judge its accuracy in here in a second and look at trends. But this uh, goes through September. Uh, now we're looking at the 30th 
the 1st of October, and it just snows. It dumps snow on Montana, Wyoming, and parts of Idaho for a couple of days here, and pretty strong snow coming down there. And if you look at the winds, when the isobars are packed really tightly together like that, potentially means some decent amount of wind. So nothing crazy, but definitely maybe 15 to 30 miles an hour down there in uh, Montana. So that's going to be uh, moving to the northeast, and then out ahead of it, Plenty of rain, maybe even some severe weather. We'll have to take a watch on that. But this is heading out towards the 1st of October, and then that moves north. And after that, we got a large area of high pressure out here. So it could stay cold out there for a few days. But I think the pattern is going to change later. And if you haven't seen my fall forecast, I'll be posting that up soon if it's not up already. So that's what that's looking like. Now, what are the models looking like for snowfall? Well, we're going to first start out in the northern plains. This is uh, the amount of snow that could potentially be falling here. This is from the GFS computer model. This goes out through about the 1st or 2nd of October here, about the 2nd of October. You can see a decent area of a foot or more snow in that area. Now, I wouldn't get it too into much, you know, too uh, excited here about the snow amounts quite yet. We're looking at just pattern changes when we get this far out, but nonetheless, Definitely indicative of a powerful storm system. I wouldn't, again, look at the amounts, but if there is a large widespread area of lots of snow, that definitely uh, increases potentially the likelihood of a snowstorm. This area, there's a lot of uncertainty. I wouldn't uh, put my stock in that area quite yet. It's been flipping around quite a bit, and I think it's just a little bit going to be a little bit too warm for that area to get snow. But nonetheless, that is very interesting to watch. So if you look at the past few frames here, this is the model trend for the same time period. And you can see it's kind of hopping all over the place. So go back again. Same time period, but different model runs. And you can see it's hopping all over the place. So this area down here, it's kind of like split by 50-50. Some show snow and some don't. Up here, it's almost, uh, you know, sometimes it goes south, but it's much more consistent up there. So very likely potentially to see some snow here late in Oct uh, October up in that area. How about the northwestern United States? We're going to look at the past several runs, and you can see it's kind of flipping around, but very consistent out in the uh, northwest part of Montana here, northern Montana, this area, and then also northern Idaho, potentially even this area as well. But it looks like northwest Montana, there is a very strong signal. And every run really does show quite a bit of snow in that area. Again, we're not looking too much into amounts here. But, man, every every run shows at least 6 inches for much of this area. In this case, 30 inches. But the GFS likes to overdo things uh, as we uh, get into this kind of weak range. Around 7 days out, it sometimes just goes crazy. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is called the max column temperature. Now, what in the world is that? Well, what we're going to look at here is where the temperature is 32 degrees or below everywhere in the atmosphere where there's precipitation falling. So you can imagine maybe this is your top of your precipitation shield where the precip starts, and this is the surface. Okay, so if the max temperature is 32 degrees, what's that mean? Well, the whole column is freezing, so everything would be frozen. Essentially, it means it's snow almost guaranteed. Now... If it was like 35 or 40, that means the snow can melt, turn into freezing rain, or refreeze and turn into sleet. So anywhere you see this, uh, let's see, zero degree line Celsius, which is 32 degrees, this blue line, it's almost a guarantee that snow is falling here. Now this is a model run, so obviously this is going to change, but you can see areas here in the mountainous regions, some areas, and uh, parts of the northwestern United States, especially out near Montana, that temperature, that max temperature is below freezing. This is really important in the early season and where we're trying to find rain snow lines and if there's enough cold air and stuff like that. And you can see there's deep cold air here in this area right here. And so northwest Montana, definitely looking very interesting here. Uh, there's definitely a good chance of some snow as we head towards late September and early October in that area. Very cold temperatures and plenty of snow, very powerful storm system as well. European computer model also showing some snow there. Not as much, but definitely showing some snow as well. So that is your total column condensate, or uh, your max temperature. So let's uh, loop this. This is uh, on the 29th, and we're gonna go through uh, the day on uh, the 30th. And you can see this kind of moves out into the Dakotas even. This is through October. Let's see, this is October 1st. So 
if there's precipitation falling, which there was, there could be some snow. As far north as North Dakota, far east as North Dakota. I wouldn't bet on it quite yet, but uh, this area right here is going to be your most likely area. All right, guys, so that wraps up the forecast. Now, in the second half of these videos, we're going to be releasing a segment, a secret segment in the second half of each of these videos, these daily videos. Now, in this case, it's called the Weather Warriors Captures. Sometimes it'll be things like this where we showcase photos and videos. Sometimes it'll be forecasting tutorials and some other things, some case studies and stuff like that. So today we're going to go over some Weather Warrior Captures. Now, if you have any photos or videos that you'd like to submit, just uh, send, send me a message here on YouTube. And if I ever get that social media website up, if it's a good idea, we'll create a group in there that you can uh, submit your uh, content to. And we can showcase these on the channel if you want us to as well. So I'm just going to go over a couple of my photos first uh, until we get those rolling in. And uh, I think this will be kind of cool. And we can talk about some crazy stuff that has happened across the country and world even. So this is a photo that I took back in 2009. This is Aurora, Nebraska. Okay, so this was a, a giant tornado here. I mean, this thing was a massive bowl. You can see the funnel up there. It really didn't quite like condense as much to the ground, but underneath was just this big dust bowl. And, and if you were up close to this, it just looked like a big wall of dust. So these things are pretty nuts, these tornadoes out in, especially in Nebraska. And you can see on radar, this is the hook. Right here is your, your outflow your forward flank downdraft. This is your RFD that kind of wraps around. You get screaming winds that come into it. We were somewhere kind of up in this area in the notch. Your tornado is going to be in there. So that very nice hook echo here on radar. Big flying eagle beast. And here's where the uh, damage occurred. You can see it kind of spread out. And that's where it was really wide right there. Probably a half mile somewhere in that area right there. So a very wide uh, you know, at least decently long track tornado, a few miles wide. And then there was some of, unfortunately, there was some damage, not a ton, but there was some damage with that storm. So that was June 9th, 2009. Now we'll go over another photo that I took out in uh, Bennington, Nebraska, more like Elkhorn, but beautiful lightning strike right here, you know, hitting, maybe it wasn't beautiful if it hit the city, but Nonetheless, beautiful lightning strike. And then you look at these uh, clouds up in the atmosphere, these bubbles. These are momentous clouds. There's stable air up in the atmosphere. It's cool way up, and they kind of sink. The cold air just kind of sinks and condenses a little bit as it gets towards uh, you know, lower elevation. And it creates these little bubbles here in the atmosphere. And what was happening behind it was the sun was setting, and it was lit, lighting up these clouds. So you got the tips of the clouds were fiery yellow. And then that... You add that with the lightning that was going across the clouds and the lightning that was hitting down onto the ground. It was pretty nuts. So lots of crazy weather, especially if you live in the plains. And then this was another storm out near uh, probably Elkhorn, Nebraska. A couple days later, nice little LP storm rotated a little bit for a while, but this is kind of dying out. And you can see it's a cumulonimbus cloud. And it just goes way up into the atmosphere. The sun was setting again, so it caught some of this rain that was falling down from the sky. Just pretty sight to see. And then you could see the sun setting right below the base of the storm. So it was just a perfect moment at that time. And you can see it's uh, the storm is dying out. The precipitation is going up like that. That's the updraft. And then the rain is coming down this way. So you can see the rain shafts coming down. And these storms can continue to build if you get that kind of setup where you can get the updraft that keeps feeding in moisture because the rain is displaced away from the updraft. So this is a cool example of a little LP storm dying out in Nebraska. This was back in like July 2010, and that was as well. So those are a couple of photos that I just decided to share for the sample here. Again, if you have photos or videos just uh, send me a message on here. Again, when we get that social media website up, we'll create a, a group that you can submit these things uh, these things to as well. So I think it'd be cool to get that onto this channel and we'll have these on each of these videos uh, that we release or a couple of them a week at least. And then we'll have some tutorials as well. So with all that said, Hope you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe if you like these videos. Hit the bell notifications because we will eventually go live, do some live streams as well. Hit the like blitz or hit the like button 
just go all out on that thing. And then uh, check out this video up here. Uh, this is the winter forecast that I created for this winter. You can check that out. It goes over precipitation, snowfall, uh, temperature, and all that type of stuff. And again, comment below, would you use that weather social media website that I was talking about? Would it be a good idea? Just comment, your uh, put your, uh, put your uh, opinions in the comment below. And uh, again, thanks for uh, joining the video today. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll see you soon.